Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now in today's tutorial, I'm going to be looking at developing a multi-signature wallet. It's a little bit of a touchy subject at the moment, and this is kind of the reason why I'm covering it. Now it's a touchy subject because about two or three weeks ago, the what's known as the Parity Wallet, um, in essence, kind of lost a lot of Ethereum. And when I say lost, as in that basically what happened was the library supporting the multi-signature wallet um, had a vulnerability in, in it and it was exposed by a user who didn't, from what I can tell, didn't do it maliciously, but uh, we'll, we'll call it accidentally, initialized the wallet as himself and then destroyed the wallet or destroyed the wallet library. And this basically stopped all the library, all the wallets that depended on that library from working altogether. And if I'm correct, that lost about $280 million worth of Ethereum, which even by kind of today's, and this is like two or three weeks later, that's, I wouldn't be surprised if that's close to 400 million at this point. So you can understand the, the detrimental loss there. So uh, the kind of the reason I'm doing these tutorials is to kind of expose and help understand to the non-technical people uh, or even with the technical people what the benefits of a multi-signature wallet are and also how to develop and test them um, securely and also understand what potential vulnerabilities you may be subjected to. So uh, what I'm going to do in this in the first tutorial, which is today's tutorial, is develop a multi-signature wallet. Then I'm going to go on to look at testing that wallet and then looking at the security vulnerabilities potentially around that wallet and past wallets. Okay, so what I've got here is a very basic contract in Remix. Now, we I should probably start also by saying that a multi-signature wallet, for those people who don't know, is a wallet that is controlled by multiple addresses. So uh, imagine your own address having X amount of Ethereum in, or even, you know, it doesn't have to be Ethereum, obviously, this will only apply to Ethereum, but the multi-signature wallet concept, if I'm correct, originally came from Bitcoin. So you have this this wallet that could be deposited and withdrawn from, from multiple addresses. So for instance, if you had uh, three addresses and you lost a key to one of those addresses, the wallet's still functional. You can still trade and use it as a standard wallet and then you don't have to worry about anything because you have multiple addresses that can interact with it. And that's kind of what I'm going to do today. Now, there's some other concepts that you might want to bring into this. Like you might want to limit how much the other contracts can withdraw. So it's like a percentage or a daily limit. So for instance, if you see that other one of the addresses taking too much out, obviously the daily limit will prevent that from occurring as well as obviously an overall sort of percentage limit of what they can withdraw. So let's start by creating a very sort of basic uh, ownership contract. Now, the first thing that we uh, that we need to do is define the sort of like the creator or the owner of the um, initial contract. And we do that by defining it on the construction. So as we've done in the past, let's create an address, let's so take private and let's call this owner. And we're gonna simply create the owner when we instantiate the wallet by doing it through the constructor. So, okay, we're simply just gonna state that the owner is equal to the message dot sender and then we're going to need to create a modifier as well and that's going to be called is owner and that is simply just going to state uh, require um, message dot sender is equal to the owner and then execute the function if that is all passed ignore that um i've just got a reflex of always pressing control s especially when i spend a lot of time in atom so we've now created the very basic constraint, but we also want the ability to add multiple owners to actually manage this wallet as well. So let's create a, a mapping essentially. So mapping um, address. Let's just think. Yeah, let's also just have a uint with that as well, which is going to be how much they actually contributed to this wallet. So let's just say, actually, let's use this as a basis. So they can't withdraw more than they deposited, for instance. That, that mm, actually, is that a good idea? Because then if, for instance, one of the keys is lost, not all the money can be uh, successfully withdrawn. So we're just actually gonna use this as a how much they deposited. Let's just call that. Um, or, or actually, just thinking this through again, would it be better just simply having an address? Yeah, I think I'm just going to stick with an address for now, because just not to overcomplicate things too much. And the reason I've gone for a uint8 is basically just to state is the address enabled or disabled. So we're going to make this private, and we're going to call this owners. So we want the first ability to be able to add 
um, an owner to the this sort of like an address of owners or the mapping of owners. So let's create another function. It's called add owner. We're going to be uh, require it to be is owner, so it needs to be the creator owner that actually can add or remove additional owners. And we're going to state it's public because we just obviously we're exposing it to the outside world. So the first thing that we're going to actually have to do to this is uh, state a an address and be passed in. So let's state address. Let's call it new owner, and then let's just simply state that owners new owner is equal to one. This static warning is telling me was variables are very similar. Owners and owners, owners and owners. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Okay, so we also want the ability to remove an owner if, for instance, we don't like them or their their activity is a little bit suspicious. So we're going to state remove owner. Now, obviously, this could have been done in one function where we also specify uh, owner enabled or disabled, but for now, I'll just go with this one. Um, existing owner. And this also needs to be is owner. This needs to be public, and that is simply it. So again, owners existing owner is equal to zero. Now we are then going to add modifier. Um, I'm going to call it valid owner, and then we're simply going to state. Let me see. How, we should call last require the message dot sender to equal underscore owner or message dot sender actually no sorry owners message dot sender is equal to one so basically it either has to be the creator of the contract or one of the valid owners which is enabled and that is basically just dictating whether it's a valid owner or not so let's have a look at some of the things that we can do with that so look, the first thing we can do is deposit let's get a spell deposit right deposit we need this to be a valid owner and we're going to make it public okay and this also needs to be Payable. So from this, we are simply just going to retrieve um, Ethereum. So technically, we don't actually need to do anything. And for instance, this could even just be a fallback method. But I'm going to leave it as a deposit for now because I'm also going to add a little bit of an event login as well. This is always just a bit of a, a bit of a security catch as well. So we're going to we're going to be able to see and expose what people are doing. Event um, message. Let's just say event deposit um, funds. We're going to pass in a string. And I'm going to pass in a event. Now, if I remember rightly, that caused me errors previously. So I'm going to say message. Actually, we're just going to say an address. Let's keep it really simple. Address uh, from and event mat. So we're just simply going to state in this a very basic concept of deposit funds, um, message dot sender, and uh, message dot value. Okay, so the person deposited the funds had to be an owner, because so essentially we can't have um, deposits from external people. If you wanted to allow deposits from external people, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, to be honest, I couldn't see why you'd actually want to limit your deposits. Um, but it's always good just to ensure that someone isn't depositing into your wallet or into your multi-sig wallet where they shouldn't be. But th that's kind of subjective. You want to you wanna add that limitation, do so. If you don't, just simply get rid of that valid owner or simply just make this a callback method and you can have it act pretty much identically to a, a real wallet. And in fact, I'm thinking of, is it worth doing it? Yeah, yeah, why not? I'll, I'll just leave it as is. But the next thing that we're going to be looking at now is the sort of withdrawal mechanism. So to withdraw funds, we do need to make it public. We also need to ensure that it is um, a valid owner. And that is simply it. Because what we're going to do then, um, we're going to state a, a unit amount and we've got to just check a few things first. So the address or actually that should work. I'm just going to do this dot. I think it's just balance. Actually, let's make this a requirement. Require uh, 
adjust the balance to be more or equal to amount. We've already verified that this is the owner. And what is that complaining about now? Uh, a function state mutability become restricted to view. Um, I'm not sure if it can if I actually want to redraw something. Um, we verified that the balance is equal to the amount. Obviously, at this point, you'd also check to see if that specific owner can withdraw that amount or if they're limited per day, how much they can actually withdraw. Uh, we're not setting any other limitations beyond that. So what we can also do there is then simply just state that message dot sender and I think it's just simply transfer amount, if I've got that function called correctly. And there we have it. And that should basically allow us to deposit and withdraw to a multi-signature wallet. Now that in a nutshell is a valid multi-signature wallet. Obviously beyond that, it's, it's adding extra functionality to do X, Y, and Z. Now, like I said, this is just a very basic and crude concept of a multi-signature wallet. Um, there's a lot more complexity that you could add to it. And I think in a sort of like a further tutorial, I'll add a little bit of extra complexity to it just so we can expose potentially more bugs uh, around the multi-signature wallet. Um, pretty much other than that, I'm just going to clean up a few of these variable names, actually. Let's call them all owners because we can use underscores to define a, um, a member attribute. So that is pretty much in a nutshell a multi-signature wallet. Now, there isn't really much more beyond this in regards to multi-signature wallet, apart from the th features that I've mentioned. Obviously, you might want to allow a time constraint only can withdraw X amount within one day, which you then potentially need to store a lot more information. But this is when you start making that multi-signature wallet kind of gas heavy. Um, you're obviously checking back and forth to see have they deposited in the past 24 hours, have they deposited x amount within the past day or so forth and so forth and i also forgot a very simple um, event there as well event uh, withdraw funds address to event amount and that's uppercase w and then just simply at the bottom there withdraw funds um, message dot sender um, and amount and there we have it. And that is basically a very simple and, and, and logged way to see a a sort of a, a multi-signature wallet in, in, in work. You could also obviously expand this as well. Or expand the withdrawal mechanism and simply create a mechanism. I don't really want to call it transfer because I think that'll cause a little bit of a conflict. So I'm going to call it um, transfer to, and I'm going to say an address uh, of to and then event not again i'm just kind of expanding this i know i did say that that's pretty much uh, the address of the sort of multi-signature wallet in a nutshell but i'm just trying to basically replicate the functionality of what a pre-existing um, contract or pre-existing multi-signature wallet would be able to do and obviously it's a, uh, it's all about replicating the functionality of that address so we've, got back from that. we've also got to verify it doesn't matter who we're sending it to just as long as the person making that interaction is a valid owner so we're going to state that that is withdrawing funds i'm going to say transfer it doesn't matter who they're sending them to because obviously we can trace that through the transactions we just need to know who was withdrawing the transaction who was withdrawing the funds in the log and keep it in the ledger and that is pretty much it i kind of want to change that to transfer funds uh, transfer funds message sender um, to and then uh, natural reflex so we'll create that one to be a transfer funds and then call that from address to and there we have it. So I'm going to stop there. And that's the multi-signature wallet I'm going to leave with. Now, on the next tutorial, what I'm going to do is look at how can we test this? How can we really go through an extensive way to ensure that this is going to be tested thoroughly? So I'm going to look at that whole concept of end-to-end -end testing. I'm going to break this off into, if possible, a unit-based um, testing. Now, there is a limit on how much unit testing I can do around this because I need multiple addresses. And that's kind of one thing Truffle is lacking at the moment is the ability to have the multiple addresses within that um, encapsulation of um, the sort of the test contract but that is the limitation of the test contract is it's a singular address that can only interact other than that you would need some sort of proxy to actually do these interactions with so like i said for now i'm going to wrap this up here 
if you found this uh, tutorial useful give it a thumbs up if you would like to stay up to date with all the videos i plan to release and obviously what i've mentioned i have mentioned quite a few that i plan to do um unfortunately it's just about the, uh, about getting the time to do them and um yeah uh, if like i say if you have any comments or questions feel free to leave them in the description box down below i try to answer every single one um but yeah either way i hope you found this useful and i'll catch you next time